Well, hey there, and welcome to a very special episode of Your Favorite Libertarian. In today's episode, we are going to be unboxing my very first suppressor, the Huxworks HXQD556TI. We're going to be unboxing this, so we're going to do our what's in the box segment, and I'll be giving you all the timeline information on all the events that transpired and all the different parts of the process that had to happen for me to start at placing my order on Silencer Shop's website to actually picking up my can. And we'll give you an idea of what the current e-file wait times are as well. Buckle up and get ready, cause here we go. All right, so here's how this timeline's gonna go. We're gonna start at the beginning, we're gonna end at the end, and we're gonna have some details in the middle, but not too many details because I also have an entire video on the kiosk process and tips and tricks on that so that you're not spending a lot of time in that kiosk. And that video I will link uh, right here and I'll probably have at the end of this video as well. But for right now, we're just gonna go quick bullet points, maybe a little explanation for certain spots but I don't wanna bore you with the details. I wanna give you a timeline of the steps in the process and then hopefully throughout this list, answer any questions that you might be having right now. All right, let's start with the very first thing that I did, which was placing my order, which happened 2-22-22. Fun date, huh? Yeah, easy to remember too. So anyway, place the order and in placing the order, I filled out as much as I could registration wise. So you create a profile on Silencer Shop's website and then you fill out demographic information. You also upload your trust if you are doing a trust or information as an individual or single shot trust, which you can also do. If you do the single shot trust, then you can purchase that on their website and then just fill out the information they need. You don't have to purchase that outside of Silencer Shop and then upload it, if that makes sense. Either way, that's where all that stuff goes is on their website. And then on the 25th, I went to the physical kiosk at the dealer that I selected for the transfer and myself and any other members of my trust also did the kiosk stuff. Again, if you want more information on the kiosk and how that works, I have a video at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Then on 226, 2022, I received an email from Silencer Shop saying that they've reviewed the documents and the registration has been completed successfully. Also on that date, they sent documents for us to sign, and those are basically documents that say, hey, this is what you filled out, this is your trust, this is your dealer, does all this look right, sign here if it does. We signed the documents and sent them back, and then on 2-27-2022, I received an email from the ATF saying that the e-forms has been prepared, meaning you can go to, click on this link, go to the ATF website and select a password. Here's your username, password, you change it. And then that information is helpful later on down the road in this timeline. So fast forwarding to 228, 2022, I was reaching out to the dealer that I selected just to see what was going on. If there was anything that they received, any thing I could do to help the process along first time, you know, want to make sure everything goes well. And they were having issues with the ATF and it was something that a lot of dealers were having issues with because e-filing was a brand new thing. There were issues for some reason with the ATF recognizing that the FFL I selected had an FFL for whatever reason. And that was going on for quite some time. And uh, some of my other friends that were getting cans were having similar issues, but told me about a particular dealer that was not having those issues. So I decided to see if I could reach out to Silencer Shop and have them transfer my order from one dealer to another dealer. So here's how that went. 3-2-2022, I called Silencer Shop on the phone. They answered pretty quickly and I told them what the situation was. They said, yeah, we can transfer from one dealer to another. You do, will just have to re-sign and re-review the documents that you signed previously because we're gonna have to change the dealer in the form from dealer A to dealer B. So I said, yeah, sure, that's fine. Uh, send me whatever I need to sign and I'll sign it. The next day I received the email, which would be 3-3-2022 with the new documents to sign. Signed those the same day 
and sent them back. Then on 321, 2022, I received an email from the dealer, the new dealer that I had selected that they were ready to certify. Now, in case you're wondering what certifying means, it is essentially the dealer confirming with you, the individual or the trust that you are who you say you are and you're the person that's actually buying the suppressor. They are confirming things with you and also with the ATF login that you have, making sure that as they're clicking on things, things are changing on your side and that is all done over the phone. If you are filing as a trust and if you're filing as an individual, you actually have to physically go into the shop that you're going to go through and go to the kiosk and they'll help you from there. But for me, since we were uh, doing it as a trust, I just had to do it over the phone. So on 3-22-2022, exactly a month from when I placed my initial order, I was certified. And certification is essentially when you start waiting on the ATF for approval. Waited, 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 waited. I think it originally went from, okay, it's 90 days now, but it's looking like uh, it'll, it's going to be like, you know, 100 days instead. And then it went from 100 days wait time, typical wait time to 120 days. And then it went to 180 days. And then it went to, I think, like 205 days to 230 days. And then it went to 240 to 245 days. And that's about the time when I started thinking, okay, maybe I'm really going to get this at some point. I was actually joking with my buddies saying, man, there's got to be like one person that's approving all these that is a little old lady that chain smokes. So she takes a lot of smoke breaks and she has Coke bottle glasses so she can barely see. And as people are walking by, she's like, is this an L or an I? And that's the person that's actually approving these because I can't imagine, I don't understand why it would be taking this long. If they promised 90 days, why they wouldn't have appropriate staff because they have way too many people at the ATF already. But I digress. On the 245th day, the same day I was having that conversation with my buddies, I was approved. I received an email from the ATF CCing the dealer stating that the status had changed to approved, which means I can now print out my stamp, which was attached via PDF to the email and take that to the dealer and pick up the can. I'm now allowed to pick up my own property. Yay. And for those of you doing the math at home, 245 days, nine months, exactly. That's exactly 10 months from when I placed my order. But as far as waiting on the HF, it's exactly nine months after it was submitted for approval and pending approval, which is exactly three times as many months as they said it would take. Government efficiency. And now it's time for everyone's favorite portion of the video. What's in the box? This is the portion of the video where I show you what's in the box. Let's start off with the box. It is a cardboard box. Everyone relax, it's fine. You also have some stickers I can't show you on the sides because they give you serial numbers and stuff. So let's not look at that. Now let's open the box and see what's inside. Proudly built in Utah, USA. Oh yeah, baby. Now we have some foam, very nice. We have a sticker, sweet. This is going on the safe door for sure. And this is their new company logo. This is Huxworks Safety Co. They were previously OSS suppressors. And you'll see some old packaging in here they included the old packaging to save money, I think, and also to be more green. So they weren't just throwing that old packaging away. You have a owner's manual instruction guide. You can go ahead and pause that at your leisure and read it in your free time. Here's the other side. It's essentially just telling you how the suppressor goes on and off of the QD device and also how to install that QD device. You have the suppressor itself right there. And you have a muzzle device that's included. Now this is the Flash Hider QD556 and you can see there's still that old logo on here because this is the old packaging. It's half by 28 thread pitch and there's the SKU and product information right there. But as you'll look when you open this and when I say you I mean me, there is an A2 flash hider in here. That's because I've already installed the muzzle device 
that goes with this on something, and I'll show you that in a sec. But in here you have uh, just some plastic that goes around it so it you know keeps it from getting gunked up before you install it. And then this is showing you a little bit of information about how to install it. So on here it says that you are not to use a crush washer with this or shims, so don't do that. On the back here it gives you your torque spec, and that is 30 foot-pounds or after it's hand tight, meaning you just you know, snug it up without really putting any force on it, you then do 20 degrees more of a turn and try to line up the flats if you can. Here's an issue I have with this setup and not to be super nitpicky, but if you're going to include the muzzle device, you should include the tool that attaches to the muzzle device that works with the torque wrench. If you want the person that now has this QD muzzle device to be able to torque it to torque spec. Now, because this has flats on it, you can just use a regular wrench and follow the instructions that they gave you, but it would have been nice, and I would have liked to see, especially for what you pay for this suppressor, to have the tool that just goes onto those wrench flats, connects to a torque wrench that's adjustable, so you can do the proper torque spec and make sure you're doing it right, right? All right, so for these two muzzle devices, there's a little bit of a difference. This is the one that's included in the packaging, and this is uh, one that you can buy separately on their website, but previously I think it was only available on Triarch's website. Uh, the reason that this is set up this way is this is a 13.9 build right here. So the barrel itself is 13.9 inches long, and then they've made a special QD muzzle device that's longer so that the overall length, once it's pinned and welded, is over 16 inches. So this here, you can see uh, you've got a pin and weld right there, and I mark this just to make sure it's not walking loose, but it's probably fine. And then you have wrench flats on the side here. This is extended past uh, this lip right here so that it's longer. Uh, so you got the threading of the barrel right here, and it's threading over that, and then stopping where the threading ends for the barrel. This one is a little bit longer, so this part is what is actually going over the threading of the barrel. Then you use the sides of this as your wrench flats and you tighten it down that way. So this one, a little bit shorter than that one, and this is the one that is included in the packaging. The way that these work, you have a shoulder here. On both of these, it's gonna be the same, you know, moving forward in this conversation. You've got the shoulder here, and that is great because when you're putting the suppressor on, all the gas and carbon and everything is gonna be in this section. It's gonna keep this clean and keep the threads clean so that you're not gonna get it all seized up and gunked up. And then if for whatever reason you do have problems getting it off, you also have wrench flats on the suppressor itself. Also, one unique thing about this suppressor is that when you put this on, it's actually going the opposite direction so that as you're shooting, this is actually tightening while you shoot. So it's never gonna come walking loose and that's why it's kind of direct thread, kind of not, because it's staying put. There's no like ratcheting system that could fail. There's no button you have to click on or press. You just twist it on the opposite direction that you normally would. And the flow through technology combined with the way that it's twisting onto the muzzle device is keeping it in place. So that's pretty cool. Well, thanks for sticking with me to the end. If you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, leave them in the comment section below. I also take prayer requests. Leave those in the comment section as well. Just tabby, tabby, tabby right under my face. And if you like this video, I really appreciate that thumbs up, clicking that icon. Make sure you click the bell if you want to be notified every time I come out with a new video on this guy or other things. There will be a lot more content on this in the future near future so stay tuned for that and as always thanks for watching stay free and god bless oh and don't forget to go to my link tree in the description below Whew, i thought i was gonna forget something glad i didn't forget anything well bye